Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, my name is Vladimir Lushnikov, um, alias Vlad Sharp, and um, I'm here today to speak about the programming language D, um, library libd, and the Slate project, and um, how we can improve about, upon the current state of systems that we have. Um, so um, I'll briefly introduce what um, I'll be talking about today, um, explain what libd is and what, what Slate is, as I'm sure I, I haven't explained clearly enough already. Um, um, go over the problems with current systems and um, present the architecture of LibD and Slate and um, ask for your participation. Um, so the way um, our team sees it is that there are problems with, um, problems with design and implementation of current systems, Linux, Mac, Windows, obviously. Um, and much of these come from backward compatibility backward compatibility option, options that um, the designers chose to kind of keep and um, the code has stagnated a little bit from there on. Um, in comparison to C, the D programming language um, aims to address the, um, some safety issues and uh, convenience issues. For example, it's um, garbage collected, you, you don't have um, you don't need manual pointers, you have references like in any normal language, but you can use pointers if you so wish. Um, so what we thought it would be nice to start from at the beginning and um, build a system which is independent of existing systems. Um, and that's um, why LibD was created by Madeleine Freudenberg, who's unfortunately not here with us today, um, and is one of the motivations for the Slate project. Um, LibD is um, a library written in D. Um, it's modern, it's um, fully featured, and I'll describe that later. And um, we feel that um, design and architecture of systems is very important, and without proper design, you, you, you can't have a, a, a good working system. That's not to say you must design it from the start, but you must, you must think about where each fe what, what each feature you add, where is it leading to. Um, so I'll introduce um, D. It's a high-level systems programming language. It, it is a systems programming language. It's, um, if, if you go by benchmarks, it's about um, sometimes as fast as C, sometimes maybe twice as slow as C, um, based on like garbage collection and um, that kind of thing. It's, um, it was imp implemented and created by Walter Bright, and um, he was, you might, some of you might know, he was the first person to write a C++ compiler for Zortec. And um, so he's got um, more than a decade of experience. And he, um, and he saw some C++ features that um, were not so clean and um, hopefully um, improved them in D. Um, it's an imperative um, language. You have object orientation. You don't need object orientation. You have template meta, meta programming um, and compile time function execution. And I'll explain. Um, um, and yeah, um, um, the, the official digital mask compiler is um, not open source for um, because the back end is proprietary and shared with the C compiler. So, um, but the um, GDC compiler is um, is um, so libd is a high level runtime library um, for D. It's written com completely from scratch. It was started a couple of years ago. Um, it's not dependent on libc at all, unlike um, many um, libraries for other programming languages like Mono, Project, or whatever. Um, it runs directly on the various um, Unix kernels at the moment. I mean, there's no reason why it can't run on something like React OS or um, even Mac if you wanted it to. It's a public domain, um, no restrictions on usage, no arguing about the GPL. As, um, the goals of the Slate project, we, want, we wanted to create something that, is, um, that um, can be extended and used for um, a long number of years. So, um, and we wanted to, to improve upon the security and usability of current systems. I mean, um, things like UAC and Windows Vista, they don't go very far in terms of security analysis, but they are very annoying. Um, uh, we, we don't see that... Um, we don't see any reason why there shouldn't be an environment that is both beneficial for us programmers and um, us users. Um, it, in reality, um, such efforts to change things are often 
um, kind of directed into patches for existing systems. And um, while that does improve the code base, um, of course, um, it, it doesn't introduce radical change, which sometimes is very much needed. Um, it's Slate, so the Slate project is an attempt to create an operating system. And I um, make that in brackets because um, we use existing kernels and so, so we don't need to write all the driver code, et cetera, um, which many projects have um, started and failed to do simply because of the lack of manpower. Um, we want it to be usable and um, we want to write it properly. So it's perhaps not, not a project meant, away, meant straight away for um, real world consumption. It needs to obviously a couple of years to mature. Um, we, don't, we don't want to build on top of POSIX and um, um, other Unix applications. We just, um, we just take the kernels and um, um, libd provides, provides a consistent systems interface for um, Slate and um, we believe all this is possible. Um, obviously um, for, to do more complex things you need the right tools. Um, generally you need more abstractions and I'll talk about those later. And um, um, the prominence of web 2.0 ASCII technologies by which I mean um, um, the kind of drive to semantic content rather than just files on a hard disk you organize yourself. Um, so a, sl Slate is meant to be a um, featured project. It's meant to be usable. It's meant to be secure. And last but not least, um, it's meant to be fast because, um, as I said, D is um, quite fast in comparison to other <laughs> comparable programming languages like C Sharp or Java. Um, um, I want to go into problems of implementation at the moment. And um, while the, the Linux kernel is an amazing piece of software, it is hugely complex to anyone who's read its source code. And, and well, who um, hasn't been a kernel hacker for years and read its source code. Um, it's hard to read sometimes. You don't, you don't quite understand why. <laughs> you have to have 20,000 macros in one file. Um, it's um, very much an evolution project when Linux started in 93 and it was quite small and now look what, look what we've got. Um, however, um, I sometimes personally um, wonder how you could actually run things on this <laughs> Linux kernel because it, it is, there are more than 12,000 con contributors and it is an amazingly huge and an amazingly um, useful piece of software. Um, there are, however, there are problems. I mean, um, there is no mainline way to do network um, AIO. Um, for, for those of us um, that don't know what it is, it's a synchronous input output. It's the sockets interface that never made it into mainline, and they've tried to kind of um, <laughs> revolutionise the way socket um, files. Well, and not, not just sockets is based, but um, so far no success in that. And it has no security infrastructure. I'll talk about that later. Um, implements POSIX, and um, which brings me to some of the um, what we feel are um, design shortcomings of POSIX, mainly mainly because POSIX was created um, a couple of um, a decade or so ago, and um, the requirements for um, functionality and um, system usability and security have changed. Um, it, it, you can argue that it's too primitive. I won't say that. I won't say that you can do everything with POSIX. Um, you, you can do, and um, if, you, if you look at what, what kind of technologies we have in Linux systems today, for example, um, then it's absolutely amazing. I, I'm not trying to take away from that. However, it's um, um, my first um, kind of issues with the security front, because you have all this API available to you. You, you can't really um, restrict um, without special kernel patches. Um, restrict security in a program and therefore you can't use tools that automatically check whether the program is correct or at least it doesn't, it doesn't do some willful damage to write, write some memory somewhere, make it executable and you have a virus or a trojan or... <laughs> and too many side effects generally. Um, the shared memory model which I'll talk about later. Um, and you can't, and most of the permissions have to be resolved at runtime. And, um, there are uh, while they do exist, there is no way for you to, to say that 
and this application needs to have a certain capability, like a web browser needs to access the internet. It doesn't need to, say, interact with a camera that's attached to your computer. Um, another problem with POSIX is it um, is threading. Um, threading code in C and C++ is notoriously difficult to write. Um, this, um, while POSIX supports message passing concurrency, which is perhaps easier conceptually and um, maybe slower, but um, easier to, de to debug because you can isolate components, etc. cetera. Um, while, while it is, exists in the POSIX standard, it's not widely used. Um, and you have to be very, very careful with it because um, um, it, ca it can be tricky. <laughs> um, so while multi-threading code is difficult to write, um, keep in mind that there are other ways to do threading than explicit shared memory models. And um, for example, if you take a simple client-server application, um, how would you how would you write such an application? Um, you would use standard the file operators because everything in Unix is a file. You would use poll, epoll, k event, or whatever, depending on which system you're at. Or you, or you could use an existing framework. Um, there, there exists plenty of either open source or commercial C++ or C socket libraries. However, if you didn't have that option and um, um, you, didn't, you weren't allowed to use such a library, then what would you do? You'd have to write everything manually. And, um, because it's, this is being done, um, I mean, there are, there are quite many pro such projects. We feel that why not just abstract it away from program and make it part of a standard system library. Um, another pro problem which I find many with programming languages is that um, the, current, the current kind of state of imperative programming languages, you don't feel like you're writing multi-threaded code. You feel like you're writing sequential code and you have these awful lock or synchronized statements all over your code. And um, perhaps we could find a better style to write um, programs in. Um, Um, okay, um, most of you are here because um, you are extremely interested in technology and hacking, and um, as am I. Um, but there is there is a global shortage of good programmers, um, as most of us realise, and, and it's and this this is because um, existing say C programs are um, notoriously difficult to get exactly right um, because of side effects threading issues, security issues, memory checking, etc. And um, the standard libraries are quite primitive, and let's not talk about .NET here. Um, and some programmers can't even cope with low-level detail anymore, and um, why should they? You don't need um, quite a lot of low-level detail. While uh, POSIX is a low-level standard, um, you shouldn't need a, another 20 libraries to utilize it. Um, and this, this kind of, this is the background to um, the creation of libd and the motivations for Slate. Um, and again, I will say that POSIX is, is absolutely amazing. It's great to have a standardized interface. And I mean, even, in, even Windows is starting to implement most parts of it. However, there are some issues. And we need to realize those, and we need to kind of see whether we can do better. Um, so, okay, um, now I'll get on to the real stuff of architecture of LibD. Um, um, LibD was um, written from scratch. As I said, it's um, completely independent. It uses the syscalls interface, and it tries to um, use as much functionality as is possible. It currently runs on... Open Solaris and Linux. Um, it can be obviously ported to um, to run on any operating system as long as it has. Well, yeah. yeah. Um, it's got a. It, it's public domain and um, it's not back, backward incompatible with anything because there is nothing to be backward incompatible with. Um, um, the key features of libd is um, message passing. Um, Objective C style, and um, this leads obviously to um, quite 
easy creation of distributed applications. It's um, got object persistence, um, again, distributed applications, and task-oriented infrastructure. So you don't create threads, you run tasks, which perhaps, um, from a human point of view, is kind of more logical. Um, and um, what I call green threads, uh, or what is called green threads, is, um, for example, you can, you can have as many tasks as you want, but if you just want to balance them over your two processes, you, know, you can do that. Um, it supports um, different programming models, um, semi-procedural and um, fully object-oriented applications. It's event-driven, mostly. Um, if you know libevent or um, c -sharp's kind of delegates, then that, that's kind of uh, the closest. And um, it's, um, for example, network... Um, Network input output is much easier to do because you don't need to distinguish between a, syn a synchronous out input output or n synchronous input output. You just uh, um, put the option there, and, and there it is. Um, it's got stack borrowing, so if you want to make um, what stack threads, then you can. Um, and no main functions because it was felt that. Um, if, you've, if you have a task, then you, you, you can just have a program class and no public synchronized void main, like in some languages. Um, it's, um, it's already got um, multi-language support, and I mean locally settings and languages and character sets. Um, it's, it has a virtual uh, input-output model, so um, some protocols already, um, some protocols that come with it, uh, HTTP, FTP, the standard kind of thing. Um, it's um, got a it's got a library for um, command line options, so that um, the, the, all the options are standardised, like perhaps a bit like getopt in in terms of um, making everything standardised, but in reality quite a far away um, better, I would say. Um, it it uses the concept of bundles, um, like OpenStep or um, Mac OS X, I dare say. Um, the exception, it's got an exception hierarchy. D is a language with exceptions and um, with, with, with comparable speed um, to C++. Um, and a consistent command line interface um, for libd programs inspired by VMS. Um, so um, it's, libd is generally very pluggable. You can write plugins for nearly every subsystem. Um, you can have your own user-defined message passing rules um, over, over, over Ethernet or over whatever, whatever kind of thing you want. Um, object serializers for remoting or whatever acronym you want to use for that. Um, plugins for virtual input output and um, automatic plugin loading. And which brings me uh, to the, the design of the Slate project. Um, if it isn't clear to you by now, libd is um, nearly nearly 100% um, done in terms of al being alpha. It's not released publicly yet. It's still being tested. We feel that um, we don't need to... If, if we can test for some bugs, then perhaps we don't need to release um, quite so soon. And uh, it will be released um, at least um, at most a month after this. And um, Slate is just... Um, an idea at the moment, uh, which we are in the process of implementing. Um, so I'll um, describe Slate. Um, it's based on libd and no, no C um, code, just D applications. Um, implementing it would require removing some of Slate's subsystems and adding them at high levels of practice. I We think um, that um, we could go um, further with Slate than LibD has gone. Um, and um, thank, thank very much, Madeleine Freudenberg, for um, implementing LibD and making at least this possible. Um, so um, the core of Slate uh, consists of LibD, uh, the virtual runtime system, the virtual private network layer, the hardware abstraction layer, transaction manager, and CMs. And um, here's a nice diagram of how we envision um, Slate to look like. So you will have your uh, kernel um, interface, uh, syscalls, 
uh, which libd will mostly talk to but the virtual runtime system can talk to as well uh, the virtual private network we believe is um, a core part of any any computer because most of them are networked and you need to have encryption between points uh, there's no point in um, having yeah um, hardware abstraction transaction yes um, okay so the virtual runtime system is a um, straightforward virtu virtual machine it's it it will include tools for uh, compiling and analyzing programs um, such as the bytecode verification which I've already touched upon um, and it will have a set of very minimal class library mappings not like the system um, namespace in um, dot net hopefully um, it's not particularly a new idea um, we admit it's the singularity and sharp earth projects for example I've I've got the dot net virtual machine to run on um, as, it, as its own but these have been um, these have been their own kernels and they haven't gotten that far except what well, Microsoft has but they have uh, quite a lot of resources compared to open source projects um, um, I want to just say that I've talked talk, uh, about message passing concurrency a lot and while I am a great supporter of message passing concurrency it's um, for some tasks it's not ideally suited especially if you're running things on um, on your local machine and um, th there isn't any reason that you can't you, that you shouldn't be able to do um, software transactional memory or just plain shared memory if you have if your program has um, has enough privileges because um, obviously you can't do them on if you have a distributed system running um, the virtual private network um, need for clustering and network security standard protocols um, nothing new um, how the solid project of KDE um, a, a great step forward I think and um, when KDE will be released finally next year um, I think we can um, we can celebrate a little bit um, and there is the kind of um, Um, the, the, HAL, um, the HAL was um, the HAL was proposed to be in the core part because um, because there is really no reason why why devices should be handled differently um, according to their manufacturer. I mean, they all most of them have kind of standard standard protocols um, along them. May, perhaps not things like graphics cards, but the kernel can handle those. Um, I mean, the standard, the standard interface then would be things like OpenGL or DirectX. Um, the transaction manager, just another component. You need, you need some part to allow transactions to run in CMs. And perhaps all of you are wondering what <laughs> actually CMs is. And um, well, uh, don't be scared by this slide. It's, um, it's just um, a bit of concepts. <laughs> concept implementation relation management system blah 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 um, it um, if you look at um, I mean it's pretty obvious that um, we we as human beings map map concepts onto implementations of them in the real world I mean chair is something you can sit on and not fall through um, that that's kind of a concept and um, um, being um, kind of a person with a mathematical incline um, the concept of uh, perhaps the easiest example is the concept of tuners. Um, I mean, if you have a pair of shoes, that that's an implementation of the concept of tuners. But um, perhaps not all of you see that all the time. Um, so, what is um, CMS? Is um, the kind of background to CMS is that um, you should you should have um, templates for. Um, for data which you store on your local system or distributed but a distributed system is just a collection of local systems and um, you have some axioms because you're not able to define everything in terms of concepts you um, that's was proven and um, it's like having a semantic wiki um, what it is in a in, in a concrete level is it is a, a basic relational database where um, you can or you cannot change the table structure. Um, um, it's got extensions for 
um, extensions for your own data types, so like an uh, uh, like PostgreSQL or Oracle. And um, the example is um, if you have like a PDF um, or a book or or, or a Word document, then um, if you have like a picture of Prague and you've tagged it to say it's Prague, if you want to learn more about it and you have some some literature on it on your hard disk or whatever, it 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 will because it's already seen that and made the made the link. You can just query your CM's um, store and and it'll tell you. Um, there's nothing to be scared of. Um, another example is running web applications. Um, I mean, f in the financial sector, for example, you need to know you need to know quite a lot of news relating to the companies that um, you buy shares with, you sell shares. Um, and while this is while this is this kind of linking is nothing new in specific areas, um, usually such systems are built in an ad hoc manner, which is not helped at all by um, the operating system, and we feel that it would be useful um, to have them built in a non-ad hoc manner. Um, so, um, to overview kind of what I said, the, the, the virtual runtime system, you would have higher level languages than D running on it, so you could, so you could have like Ruby or Erlang or whatever you wanted, or, or new languages. And um, the VPN should be prime method of communication with other computers for security reasons. Um, CMs being the storage mechanism, and um, we consider these all to be very low level, um, as maybe paradox as it sounds. Um, Slate, hmm? yeah. Um, how does your project um, relate to Plan Nine? Because um, it doesn't. Uh, I mean, um, we we don't we haven't collaborated um, with Plan Nine. Plan Nine. Um, Plan 9 uses <sighs> Plan 9 uses uh, some of the some of the kind of um, concepts that we we are doing here, but um, um, we are building on libd and the D programming language, and we believe that's the way forward. Sorry if that doesn't answer your question, kind of. Can I have? Okay. Um, have you, um, Eric Raymond said about Plan 9 that Plan 9 is better than Unix. It doesn't use POSIX. It um, has many similarities to your approach, but it uh, didn't take off because uh, Unix is just uh, not bad enough at doing uh, its stuff. So um, maybe you, you have many great ideas, but it won't be really useful. Um, the It's it's always a gamble when you take on such a project, to um, to kind of try to realise those ideas. I mean, what um, and make them popular. Um, I would say that um, we have a good chance of succeeding because we're we're mm, at least a bit later on in the. Yeah. Like, okay. Um, that um, we're using, um, I mean, things like CMs, etc. Et um, are we, th we think basically that um, we're making a bigger step than that Plan Nine has made, and um, I'm sure if you, um, and that's the reason we'll succeed. Okay. Thank you. Okay, for. Um, because uh, uh, Slate would be targeted mainly at servers um, in the first stages, um, we um, we feel that clustering is um, obviously a very important um, application, and um, why not have it at, at the systems level? Um, and uh, Libby already provides a um, message passing interface, object persistence, um, serializing over the network. Nice network interface, um, and this would, um, and this would this would help us implement clustering, and and obviously the message passing being the kind of method used for implementing it. Now we'll talk about security, um, a bit about class libraries and the file system built on CMs. 
Um, security functions, um, we build uh, our basic premise for security is that um, most of the higher level code uh, from, from the core upwards would be, um, would be built upon the virtual runtime system, um, i.e. it would be compiled to bytecode and then um, stored under the control of um, the operating system you're running on, uh, Slate, um, in, in, uh, with hashes to verify the identity, etc. Um, and so you would have a security verifier and you would have a polar co what I call a polar coordinator which will, which will kind of be a slightly separate system which checks, um, checks permissions on a kind of user level. Um, bytecode is easier to do in terms of security. You don't have to kind of, um, you don't have to run the code to, to find out what it does. Um, you know your, your kind of um, class library entry points. You know which functions are being called. Um, hopefully the class libraries themselves are code reviewed so that they don't provide um, as many bugs as um, as many bugs as the programs written by programmers um, using Slate. And um, as I said, um, we can assign uh, we, we can know what um, what the bytecode really does, and then we can compile it natively uh, again and store it in a secure fashion. Um, and for user interaction, this is um, this is where the polar coordinator can, comes in. Principle of least authority is a very nice concept for security. I mean, um, you don't you, you only need to allow certain applications and um, just um, just a bit of uh, just a bit of everything that they need, and we can resolve certain certain things automatically based on um, signatures um, from trusted publishers, a bit like you have in Windows already, but um, obviously I'm more advanced. Um, the design here is based on, on a principle, so it's, um, we haven't decided how to implement Polar quite yet. Um, I mean, there are several ways to go about it. We could just, we could just intercept all library calls and um, do it that way or do it statically through the bytecode verifier. Um, um, the kind of class libraries um, um, the, the class libraries would be um, kind of done in, in the same net sti dot net style, but hopefully with less, um, much less um, um, obfuscation and uh, sometimes bloat, um, and coupled with some high level languages um, running on the virtual runtime system, it would prove um, we think we feel to be a very attractive system for um, developing applications. Um, this is, um, I'm sure many, all of you are aware, this is why Microsoft has succeeded. They've, they have excellent tools for building Windows applications and while Windows is not the best platform to develop for, the tools really help you um, quite a long way. Um, the file system then, it would be, uh, the Sims is being the storage mechanism um, and um, while um, things like Google Desktop or um, similar projects, a Beagle um, have kind of started to do metadata, metadata um, indexing of files. Um, we feel that um, they, they're just add-ons to a system, um, and we could just in, uh, incorporate it into um, into the file system itself and um, um, kind of distinguish between uh, user-created content and um, application-created content, i.e. Um, um, in most cases, um, I find that um, user-created user content, you tend, you tend to organize it hierarchically. Um, like your music collection, for example, you might have, um, or you might not, if you're using um, ID3 tagging or whatever. Um, you, you might have them in a hierarchy of folders based on kind of genre or artist or year. And um, it doesn't need to be that way. We could just, we just store it somewhere within a table in a relational database and then um, view it however, in whatever fashion we like. Um, the file system is not a description of how um, data should be stored. I mean, it, it could be a relational database. It could be streamed over the network. Um, and um, we believe this approach is effective because most user data doesn't belong to a single category. Um, 
and um, kind of going away from the Unix way of um, putting socket and file operations in, into one, we, we think that, we, that with this, um, this, this will <laughs> provide a very good reason for separating file and socket operations because files are now s semantic things which have metadata like um, photos, place, location, time taken, uh, which you already have in, in the JPEG and you just read that and um, cache it. Um, okay, I'll quickly go through the other parts of Slate. Um, query interface, because um, um, you already kind of you, you already kind of have something like the proc interface, and that that in a sense is a query interface. You could you could like s see the processor um, processes, their thermal states, um, process numbers, whatever, and um, just standard SQL or whatever syntax you wanted to use for it. Um, things like environmental variables um, are quite a crude concept because um, say you have in, in, in a Linux system you have an environmental variable set globally uh, which controls some security function which, which it shouldn't um, but it does because um, no one has thought of this and um, you overwrite it in your bash, bash RC or whatever and um, bam, you've changed the environmental variable. It might be just for your shell, however. Um, this is kind of like, a, a bit like, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, for package management, we'll utilize um, the kind of libd's bundles, bundles concept. Of course, we'll be able to control where they reside on the file system. Um, the file system being your kind of database files or whatever it needs. Um, for indexing it, and et cetera. And um, we feel that there is absolutely no advantage in, except perhaps speed, but um, as we all know, speed is um, very much a multi-core game th these days. Um, for an application um, to be a set of files just in some program files directory or in USR, um, the white code verification and storage are more secure and possibly more easy to manage if, you, if the system crashes, um, the transaction manager being kind of um, the gateway for that. Um, and um, of course, CMs would be a pluggable entity, much, much like much in the spirit of libd, and um, a standard configuration interface. Um, I mean, Windows has a standard configuration interface. It's the registry. GNOME has a standard. Uh, KDE has a standard by. Why shouldn't a operating system have a standard configuration interface? The future direction for Slate is, of course, a GUI, um, more research into design, and perhaps we'll implement it someday. Um, we've already started doing that, however, and we need um, your help very much. Um, the, um, Slate is under the Zlib license. It's not public domain, um, like libd, however, that's that shouldn't pose any problems whatsoever to um, kind of um, help with implementation. Um, so I'll just quickly go over what I've said. Um, we're probably going to be aiming for the server market with Slate, um, which, which is our security across the network, clustering and concurrent applications, um, easy application maintenance um, and programmability and fail-safe fail -safe applications, much in the style of Erlang, this, this is all possible. Um, the, a user program would benefit by, um, by class libraries in a higher level language than C, which is, um, which while being extremely good, is some, quite a pain to work with if you need to do something complicated. It's an orthogonal environment across different platforms because it runs on uh, current kernels and hopefully easier to code for than something like C++ and OpenMP. Um, so yes, I've presented LibD and the Slate project, um, which are uncluttered by previous baggage and hopefully provide a more attractive feature set than current systems. And um, again, I can't re reiterate this um, enough. Um, we need your participation if um, OS 2.0 and Slate will become a reality by well, the next millennium or whatever. So thank you for listening, and I'll take any questions.
Hello. Ah, excellent. I'm interested in the storage layer. You're talking about uh, it being a database. Now, a relational database is something fairly complicated um, with an optimizer to run fast. Uh, an object database then adds things like lists and pointers and, and bags and sets. And what you're trying to do here is um, add inference, which I would expect is, um, is an even higher level. So, it sort of, so if you want to store what um, in the Microsoft world would be a, a 10 megabyte spreadsheet with um, thousands of cells, would you, how would you represent that and how would you make it go fast? Because one of the design goals is fast. Well, um, I mean, an Excel spreadsheet is, um, the, there are two ways of going about this. Well, two obvious ways anyway. Um, one is to actually store the .xls or whatever in, inside a cell in the database and then just access it and that should be fairly fast. Um, however, um, what if you wanted to modify it? We all know that um, modifying, modifying data is um, in a relational database is perhaps a bit slower than trying to access it. And so the other option is, of course, to, to have another, another kind of relational, relational, mini relational database representing your table. Um, however, um, how, do you access it? How, how do you access it now? You just, you just access it and then write it and you have, you have a cache of disk flashes and um, that's that. I'm not sure whether there would be any significant slowdown with our approach. Um, I mean, you can always optimize, optimize things away as long as, you, as long as you kind of keep it in memory for long enough um, for you to do some useful work. then it should be fine because then you just be updating it. At least <laughs> that's how I can see it. Any more? You said that libd will be released in your future? Yes. And uh, on which kernels will it be able to run? So as it does... Uh, at, at, as it does, it runs on Linux and uh, Open Solaris, but it shouldn't be difficult to um, port it, port it okay. to uh, the BSD. And okay, thanks. Okay, yes. Um, I have one question about the uh, um, compatibility plan. Um, do you plan to, to make it comp uh, comp compatible on a high level, like um, somehow port applications over, like OpenOffice, um, fix it to run on libd and, and slate? Do you think that that's possible? Or is, is it, is, uh, it is very is it possible so to implement a POSIX emulate, uh, a libc emulation layer on top of libd, and it shouldn't be significantly slower than libd itself. Um, however, um, our, our, our team directly won't be doing that, but um, of course you can take it and do it yourself. I think it's, it's, it's possible. It's yes, no yes, yes. Major problem. It is, it is a major effort to write a libc kind of layer on top of libd because libc is a big kind of venture, but yes. There's no reason why not. Right. Plus, existing C code can, of course, run um, while while if, while the Slate doesn't um, doesn't control it. It can it can just run alongside libd code. They just can't communicate via um, normal methods of um, linker um, loading, etc. I have another question related to the D language itself. Mm -hmm. You said that the digital mass compiler is uh, not open source. Uh, the front end is open source under the artistic license. The back end isn't. Um, the GDC compiler uses the front end um, of DMD, the digital mass compiler, and uses the GCC back end. And you said uh, that the GDC is not fully compatible with the... Um, there are some minor quirks here and there. Um, Mainly, 
mainly in some obscure kind of D features, which you don't usually encounter unless you're writing um, systems libraries. So you would say that using GDC is no real problem? There is no real problem in using GDC at all. Okay, thanks. Test, test. Hi. Um, you told about the bytecode verification mm -hmm. that there um, should be a central instance or something. Um, that did, the, did the, I the bytecode sh verifier should be kind of separate from the, um, uh, the system that interacts with the user. Yeah, right. Um, could this somehow be used or app used for enforcing digital rights management or something like that? Or is, am I misunderstanding there? Um, I'm sure a company could take it and abuse it for digital rights management. We have absolutely no intention of doing that. And uh, perhaps now you mention it, we, we, we could design it to make it more difficult for abuse. <laughs> Who's behind the uh, state project? Is there any bigger corporation who is interested in this project? Um, no, we You've started. We started. Micro, we started quite recently. Um, but um, I've, I've mentioned a couple of systems that are kind of are similar. I feel in in style, but there is no bigger corporation behind us. We're just a group of um, hackers in, enjoying uh, programming better systems. Hello. Um, the reason why we like Unix is because it's uh, free, um, it's flexible, and you can use whatever language you want. You can use, for example, RiserFS, um, XFS, EXT3, yeah. uh, but um, if you use Slate, you, you are forced to, to use uh, this kind of uh, um, um, file system. You are, you are forced to use the D language you're forced to use uh, certain uh, system calls or certain libraries uh, because of the security system. Um, it takes a lot of the freedom away. Um, yes, it does. Um, and I, I agree that um, while we might not be providing um, more choice in terms of kind of different file systems, um, uh, if we're on the topic of file systems, imagine if you had um, ZFS natively available to you on the Linux kernel, then um, um, then at least I would not see any reason for uh, not to use ZFS because it is um, a better designed file system than, um, say, um, XT3, which is, yeah, I mean, maybe XT4. Um, so we don't, we don't feel that... Um, it's taking away your freedoms enough to, um, for, you, for you not to consider using it. But um, um, as, it's, as, um, you should be able, as you should be able to remove the CMs kind of thing, if you don't want like a local hard, hard disk or whatever, you can design to plug, plug it away and replace it if you want. No more questions? Yep. Do you, do you think with this um, porting stuff, um, I've just thought about this, and this is like, this is like stupid. You take a C kernel, a C programmed uh, kernel for the operating system, then you put libd on it, then you put uh, uh, libd, glibc uh, adaption layer between it, and then you can run your, um, your old applications. No, I mean, you, you can, you no, can, no, no, no. You can, you can run your old, old applications. It's so just that if you want to interact with them um, using things like dynamic loading, it, it just won't work. But they can run side by side on a normal system no, or whatever, yeah. but you lose the benefit of security things and etc. Sorry, is that no, not... No, what, what I, what I um, meant is uh, not, not um, that, uh, that it's unnecessary to, to do an... Uh, um, translation layer if if um, if, uh, if the kernel is uh, C and you can just can you just co uh, the reason run concurrently libd and glibc the reason we're not um, we're not proposing writing our own kernel is because it is too difficult for a, 
a couple of hackers to do in, in, in the space of, uh, say, five years or whatever. So, um, so we, if, if we had the manpower, then we would, um, we would propose our own kernel design. But that is out of the question because of <laughs> the, the extreme complexity of writing a kernel. So, um, would you, would you, um, uh, what, what do you think would it mean uh, for the security if, if uh, libd and glibc applications live in the same space? Well, it would, mean, be just as that, it would be just be as secure as um, your, your standard C application. Oh. I, there wouldn't be any improvement, I wouldn't say, because they can, they can access memory and that's enough. <laughs> All right. Okay, thank you.